Good morning, everyone. This is morning of day seven here for us on our journey this year to harvest morels in the Yukon Territory of Northern Canada. Yesterday we scouted those burns and today we're going to do a nice big camp day building our structures and shower and wash area. Everything so we can live out here in the bush and work out here. So we're gonna have some breakfast and then we're gonna build our next Quonset. Pancakes. It's golden brown. Not the healthiest breakfast, but it sure does taste good. Caramel and peanut butter on there. You gonna eat that? Good morning, Yukon! Carrying a mushroom dryer. Mushroom dryer? Okay, we're gonna start building our fire pit now. So we wanna be in sight of all of our structures here when we're sitting around it. So we've decided to put it right here into this sort of gravel bank. And we'll, this is all nice, easy to shovel gravel. So we're gonna dig all that out, level it along here, and then dig our big pit, fill it with rock and do our normal process. We got chickpeas, cabbage, some fireweed shoots, tomato, some canned tomatoes, some some spice, and some, couscous. And some cheese on top. Couscous. <laughs> That's really good. Well, we spent most of our day getting soaking wet. We finished our fire pit here, so as usual, we've got our pit underneath that's about three feet deep full of rocks for burning off our dirty wash water so that it doesn't stink like meat after a couple weeks of being here. Alex has also added in this little oven unit, we'll try that out. And then Alex has been getting firewood like a madman and poles, we've been getting poles all day. So we'll use these to build all of our structures. And then I'm just peeling a couple poles for making our dishwashing station we always make so that you don't get covered in charcoal every time you do the dishes. This is the reality of a commercial mushroom harvester's life a lot of the time. Getting stuck in the rain waiting. But you need the rain for the mushrooms to grow. That means you gotta camp in it. So we got absolutely drenched working all day in the rain. And now we're just trying to warm up with our nice campfire here. So this is one of the techniques we use to keep the campfire going when it's raining. You just got a sheet of metal over a piece of wood and that just creates a nice cover for the fire so it doesn't get wet. So we've been able to sit here for the last little while drying out. I'm getting there. Yeah, me too. It's been raining now for probably 12 hours, something like that. So hopefully this uh, pays off and we get lots of mushrooms. Picking mushrooms. Lots of mushrooms. No. But for now, all we can do is drink warm tea and sit by this fire. Now we're still a month away almost from the longest day of the year. Guess what time it is right now? It's about 10 p.m. on a rainy day 
and it's still bright. So it'll be light out till one in the morning probably. But come next month, it won't be getting dark at all. While we wait out this rain, we're gonna just drive down the road and check another burn. We think there might be road access, but we need to go find out. So we're back on the road driving again. It's raining. Raining, pouring. That side road didn't take us quite to the burn, but we could see the burn. So maybe 500 meters down this hill that's over here and we'd be into the burn. When it's not raining, I'll have to fly the drone up and get a better look over there. But when we stopped, we noticed an old heritage cabin site. Now these, some of these go all the way back to the Klondike Gold Rush of over a hundred years ago. This one looks like it was used more recently. These cabins are scattered across the Yukon. You never know what you'll find in them. Chimney pipe. To think, we traveled all this way with chimney pipe and we could have just grabbed it right here. Garbage pit. Stuff, the squirrel's now living in here. There's a bit of a squirrel chew. And this has been used off and on. The whole floor is squirrel holes. I'm afraid to walk on it. Yeah, it's pretty soft. I don't want to walk on that. Who knows when it was originally built, but you can tell it was used again later on, probably years and years later, because there's poly and modern insulation in and around the original insulation. We hope to find another one of these out in the middle of nowhere one day, because we have in the past, and we found those uh, collectible bear traps, which is pretty cool. Let me go back to camp. Well, it's not my cleanest structure I've done over my tent, but this will shed the rain and hopefully being down in this little dip will be a little bit cooler when it warms up in this area and a little less exposed to the heat with these little trees providing me a little bit of shade considering we're on the edge of a gravel pit. This morning's breakfast, bannock bread with cheese and herbs. Don't panic, we got bannock. <laughs> Now we are working on our bucket shower. We've tied a rope up here, which our bucket will hang from on a pulley system. So there's a door, it just uses this. And it sticks on there like that. So you can come in here with your hot water. There'll be a cold water bin in here as well. The bucket is hanging. In the bottom of the bucket, there's the holes. You lower it down, it's on a pulley system. And then you put in your hot and your cold water. And then you just pull on this rope. Get it right up to there, it'll start dripping out of those holes. When it's full of weight, you just take these, and loop them on there, and you've got about a 10 minute shower. And it's better than the snow melt in the creek. So if you've ever camped before, especially for a longer period of time, you probably know that doing your dishes and washing up at the end of the night can be a bit of a pain in the butt, especially when you're working hard or you're hiking all day, like we do. We have a nice system we use for washing our dishes. Uh, so we, we wash everything in totes and then we use baskets as dish drainers and we burn off all our wash water under the fire. So right now we're gonna be building our standard kitchen wash station that we've built before. And this works great, it's pretty easy to do, and it makes our lives a lot easier. There we go, it's complete. 
So the way the system works, we've got a couple of little shelves on either side. A little dish soap shelf. We've got our paper towel holder, and that can come on and off. We did use screws. You can do most of this with lashing. It's just much slower, and we're here to work, so we need to get things done quickly. But lashing would work fine. Uh, cast iron all hanging, utensils, pots and pans, griddle. And then the beauty of this is these rails just hold these in. This is our hot water wash. It pulls in and out, so you can go dump it out when you're done. So we usually put all our dirty dishes in here, pour hot and cold water in to make warm water, wash with soap, and rinse off all the dishes with cold, take all the dishes out of there into the dish drainers, and then drain the dirty mixed water into the fire and burn it off underneath so it doesn't start to smell. And then this here is just a nice little hand washing station so you're not washing your hands in the in the dishwashing sink. And this is nice to have because we're working in a forest fire. Look, this is what happened just from doing this build. Oh, we're just working on another table here. So we're gonna put on these legs. And there's our nice tabletop. So we can use that for our kitchen stoves and free up the table that they're on now for doing kitchen prep. We've also moved the trailer here. Randy will be our main security guard and chef this year. So, so this puts him central between our drying quonset behind the trailer here and the cookhouse. We've also got uh, two security cameras on our stuff at night, which is a bonus too. This is day number eight, so I'm gonna go try out our new shower. I'll let you know how it goes. Woo! That was nice. Now we'll get it going for the next guy. Fill it back up with water and get it boiling on the fire again. Got it all notched out on there, see? Gonna be great. Wild harvested fireweed. This is an abundant plant. So we like to supplement our food out here with some wild harvesting. This is a great green we can add into our stir fries and soups. Fireweed. It's where it grows. Yukon Canada. And the old forest fires. Fried rice? For you boys. Oh yeah. We've got veggies, we got rice. Fair and we've got Randy's special touch going in there. Wild harvested. In Canada. They look great. Good colors. You want seconds? You sure do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Good morning, everyone. Today is day nine of our trip here in the Yukon Territory. And today we're going to be reassembling and building the wood stove room and drying setup in our second Quonset tent. We prefabricated this build a little while ago. There's a video on our channel showing that, which I can link in the description. And this will be our first time resetting it up. And everything was pre-drilled and marked and labeled. So we're hoping that it goes together fairly easily. It will take a little while, but by the end of the day, we should have a fully functional mushroom drying setup that can do between three and 500 pounds.
And so now we've just transported all of this 3,000 kilometers and it's gone in exactly how we had it back at home. So just a brief overview, wood stove in here. We can flash heat flash mushrooms to finish them off in here, but the ambient dry air gets pulled through this ducting down up through our dryers. It's where all the mushrooms go in when they're fresh and then the overflow can be on racks here if we need it. We still have a while to wait before there's gonna be mushrooms. Once they start growing, we'll be ready. And we get to enjoy this wood stove room in the meantime, if it's rainy this week, we can dry out all of our gear. I thought it was like 6.30 p.m., but it's 9.30 right now. And so we're gonna sit down and have some late dinner. We have some pesto pasta with some veg and fire reed. Oh, nice. Oh, that looks amazing. Fire weed in there, beautiful. Mm. How's the food? Well, freaking awesome, Alex did such a good job. Alec, wow. Good? Oh yeah, no, it's really yeah. tasty. Pesto. Just a casual meal for us. channel into the pit underneath the fire like we showed before. It just takes all the dirty meat water and this water will start to smell bad after a while and that'll attract the bears. Finally settling into our nice new camp here. Starting to feel at home. It's pretty quiet out here. We are really in the middle of nowhere. The highway is the only lifeline to civilization. The car that's coming right now is the first car in about half an hour. You just hear it in the distance. How do we clean it? Oh, it's a good day of doing camp work. We hope you enjoyed episode 6 of our 2023 morale season. If you did, then give the video a like and subscribe to our channel. You can also find our online store linked in the description below. 
Join us in the next episode where we'll scout a very remote wildfire near Mayo Lake, Yukon, just south of the Wind River Trail of the northwestern Mackenzie Mountains. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.